Hey you Thames, how you going? How's the whole coronavirus thing going? That's good. Anyway, um, we should have finished indices and certs by now. Uh, we haven't done the test for it. I do not know when the test is. I don't know what's happening with that. But anyway, I thought if you're bored in the holidays, in the extended holidays, we might as well get started on our next topic. And our next topic is straight line graphs. So yeah, let's do it. Why not? Okay, so I'm going to give you a chance to copy down the notes, as always. Copy it down, pause it if you need to. Some of this is from previous years. But you probably forgot it all anyway. Alright, we'll get to the questions in a minute. It's a bit of an ex a long exercise. It's got lots of stuff that we're going to go over. So, it's kind of from year 7 to 9. So, let's have a look. Let's start. Firstly, the gradient. Gradient is the slope of a, of a line. The symbol for gradient is M, and it can be calculated by rise over run. There's also a formula, which I'll write up here anyway, which equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And you use that when you've got two coordinates to work it out, but don't worry about that just yet. Some people might have seen that though. So at the moment we're just doing M equals rise over run. M is the gradient. Awesome. Let's go to the next bit, please. So down here, if we've got a straight line graph through our x and y axes, see the x and y axes there in blue, so our straight line graph is going up this way. So to work out the rise over run, you work out the distance. So if we draw a little triangle in there, like this, from that point to that point up there, this is the rise, that's the distance from there to there is the rise, and that distance from there to there is the run. So you work out that distance over that distance, and that's the gradient. And I've got another important thing here. That point there, where the line cuts the y-axis, is called the y-intercept, because it intercepts the y-axis at that point. And the same down here, where the, where the uh, graph cuts the x-axis, is called the x-intercept. So you've got to be aware of those. And the point right in the middle is called the origin. The origin, which has coordinates 0, 0. Excellent. Hopefully it's all coming back to you. Let's go to the next bit. Gradients. A positive gradient slopes in that direction. A negative gradient slopes down when you're going left to right. Now remember, the gradient is the steepness of a line. So if a, if a um, line is horizontal like that, it has no steepness. So its gradient is zero. So that has a zero gradient. So like the floor, if it's flat, it should be a zero gradient. And the last one, a vertical line is either infinite or sometimes it's undefined. Same thing in a test, you'll get the same, you'll get a mark for either answer. Alright, a bit more revision. When we have an equation in the gradient intercept form, y equals mx plus c. So m stands for the gradient and c is the y-intercept. So that's another thing you've got to remember. c is a symbol for the y-intercept. So an example down here, if we had an equation y equals 4x minus 5, it's pretty easy to see. The gradient is there. So the gradient is in front of the x, so the gradient is equal to 4. And the y-intercept is not 5, it is negative 5. Don't forget that minus sign. So the, so the y-intercept is minus 5. See, the symbol is C. Excellent. So hopefully that's a bit of, bit of a refresher. And let's do some special graphs. So special graphs are generally vertical lines or horizontal lines. So they're not in the same form as y equals mx plus c. They're like up here. So if you look at this vertical line only, it cuts the x-axis at x equals 4. So the equation of that line is simply x equals 4. That's all you have to say. Because every point on that line, the x value is 4. It doesn't matter what the y value is, the x value is always 4. So a vertical line is just x equals 4. That's if it cuts the x-axis at 4. If it went through the x-axis at 6, it would be x equals 6. Easy peasy. And a horizontal line, here it cuts the y-axis at negative 2. So the equation of this one is y equals negative 2. Because every y value is negative 2. So there's special graphs you just have to remember. <clears throat> and the last one here is this diagonal line. The reason why it's special is because its y-intercept is through the origin. So its y-intercept is 0. So remember how we write the equation as y equals mx plus c. m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept. 
In this case, the y-intercept is zero. So there is no plus c because it's plus zero. And the gradient can be found from our little triangle here. We've got two points. So there, our rise is two and our run is one. And we know it's a positive gradient. So the gradient is two over one, which is two. So the gradient is two. So we have y equals two x and then it's plus zero. But of course, you don't need the plus zero. So the equation is y equals two x. So that's how we get that equation there. So it's special because it goes through the origin, so there's no um, y-intercept at the end added on. Excellent. I'm going to stop the tape right there. So that's our bit of theory. Now I'm going to do some uh, questions that we have to, um, you, have, you have to know. So we'll go over that over to the other board right now. Okay, so thanks for joining me again. Welcome to my maths lesson. All right. So the first question people always get stumped on. They're generally multiple choice questions. And it says here, Decide if the point negative 2, 7 is on the line of, and then this equation. So the way we do that is, this is our x value, our x coordinate, and that's our y coordinate. So the point is minus 2 is our x value, and the y value is 7. I'll let you copy down all these notes in a minute, so at the end I'll go through it and you can copy it down if you like. So what we have to do is substitute each of these values, x equals minus 2, y equals 7, into this equation. So let's do that first. So we get 7, because that's the y value, equals negative 3 times negative 2, negative 3 times x, plus 1. So we get 7 equals, so that equals negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6, plus 1. So we get 7 is 7. So because both sides of the equation are equal, that means that that is true. That means that, means that point does lie on the graph of that equation. If you've got something like 7 equals 5, that's obviously not true, that would mean that that point does not lie on the equation. So what you do is substitute both points in to the equation, and if both sides are equal when you work it out, then that's great, that point is on the line. So let's try the next one. Um, so here it is, it's just in a different form. So 2x, so that's 2 lots of minus 2, because minus 2 is x, plus 2 lots of 7 equals 1. 2 lots of minus 2 is negative 4, plus 14 equals 1. Negative 4 plus 14 is 10, 10 equals 1. Does 10 equals 1? No, it doesn't. So that, therefore you would say the point minus 2, 7 is not on this line. So it's not on the line of that equation because those two values are not the same. Okay, so hopefully you remember how to do that. Okay, let's go to the next one. Find the gradient and y-intercept, and then sketch. So you have to sketch the graph. A sketch does not mean plot it accurately. A sketch is a quick sketch on the board, as long as all your values are pretty much correct. So let's have a look. The gradient, from our knowledge before, the gradient is the value in front of the x, so the gradient is 2, and the y-intercept is negative 1. And now we can sketch a graph. So you draw a quick x and y axis like that, so we start off with our y-intercept. Our y-intercept is at negative 1. So there's our first point. For any straight line, you only need two points to, to draw the graph of the straight line. Now the gradient is 2, it's positive 2. So we know it's sloping up that way. 2 is the same as 2 over 1. And remember, that's rise over run, which means its rise is 2 for every 1 across. So let's go up 2. So up to 1 will go take us up to 0. And then up another one, we'll take us to one. So we went up two and across one. And there's our point. I'll do it again. From that point, the gradient's two. So you go up two and across one. There's our second point. Now all we need to do is connect them up with a straight line. And put the little arrows on the end. And there's our graph. So our gradient is two and our y-intercept is negative one. Excellent. Let's go to our next question up here. This time, you notice it's not in the form of y equals mx plus c. So we have to rearrange the equation to make y the subject. So, 3y equals, we'll bring the 2x to the other side, so it's minus 2x plus 3. Now this is a tricky bit. We need to divide each term by 3. See, and then the 3 is cancel. So we get y equals negative 2 thirds x, 3 over 3 is 1, plus 1. 
and I've just brought the two thirds out the front of the x third so we can see what the gradient is. So now we can write down the gradient is negative two thirds, which means the rise is two and the run is three, but it's in the negative direction. And the gradient, oh sorry, the y-intercept is one. So now we've got to sketch our little graph. So we can do it here. So label the x and y axes there. So we start off with our y-intercept again. Our y-intercept is at one. So there's our value one, that's one point. To find our second point, we use the gradient. So this time it's a negative gradient, so it's going that way, it's sloping that way. And the gradient is, the rise is two, and the run is three. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down two, so we go down one, two, and across three. One, two, three, and there's our point. We connect them up, and we're done. We could have, but since we know the gradient's in the negative direction, we could have gone up two, one, two, and across three, one, two, three, and we'll get the exact same result. So it doesn't really matter which way you do it. So connect them up with a ruler like I have, and put the arrows on the end. And there's your sketch, perfect sketch. You've done it, you've identified the uh, y-intercept, and you've shown the second point by using the gradient method. So good job. All right, pause it if you need to go over it, if you need to digest, and rewind it and listen to that again, if you need to. All right, sketch by finding the x and y-intercepts. You should have done this in year 9. We start off, there's our equation, we start off y-intercept. That's when you let x equal 0. Show your workings out. Show that first line. So when x is 0, two lots of 0 is 0, we get y is negative 8. So my first point is 0, and the y value is negative 8. So there's our first point. That's called the y-intercept, 0, negative 8. To find the x-intercept, you let y equal 0. This one requires a little bit of work. So 0 equals 2x minus 8. Bring the 8 to the other side. 8 equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2 and you get x equals 4. Now our x value is 4 and our y value is 0. This is all year 9 maths. So there's our two points. Remember we only need two points to do a sketch of a straight line graph. So now we can do our sketch. There's x and there's y. 0 and negative 8 is down there, there's negative 8. 4, 0 is roughly there. Notice I labelled my two points, connect them up with a straight line, and there's your graph. Perfect sketch, it's neat enough, um, and I've labelled the, the two intercepts. It's a good job, you've got 100% so far. Let's do the next one. This time you notice it's not in the form of y equals mx plus c, it's in a different form. Let's just leave it like that, it doesn't matter with this method. So the y-intercept, let x equal 0. So minus 3 times 0 is 0, that bit's gone. So we've got minus 2y equals 6, divide by minus 2, and you get y equals minus 3. I like writing the point here, so 0, minus 3, the coordinate, so I don't get confused next. That's the y-intercept. Let's try the x-intercept, let y equal 0. So this bit's going to be 0, so we've got minus 3x equals 6, divide by minus 3, and you get x equals minus 2. So let's write down our point, minus 2, 0. We've got our two points, now all we have to do is sketch them. So, do your sketch, there's x and there's y. So, minus 2, 0 is our x-intercept, so label it minus 2. 0 minus 3 is down here, 0 minus 3. And sketch them up, connect them with a straight line. Use a ruler, please, just like I have, and put the arrows on the end, and there's your graph. Excellent job, guys. All right. Now, these are the easy ones. Sketch these special lines. So, label your axes again, x and y. y is equal to negative 2. So you find the y, oh, sorry, y is equal to 2. So you find the y value of where y is 2, and it's a horizontal line put the arrows on and you are done. Because every value equals uh, y is equal to 2. Next one, the same as this one. These are just give me marks. You just have to remember it and you'll be fine. You find the value of where x is minus 3, which is there, and you put a vertical line straight through it, put the arrows in, and you've got the mark. Good job. Let's do this one. Why is that a special graph, everyone? Because there's no, um, there's no y-intercept. Can you see that? It's the same as saying plus zero at the end. 
y equals mx plus c plus zero. So it goes through the origin. And what's our gradient? We can write down the gradient if you want. The gradient is negative one half. Let's write down the y-intercept as well. Y-intercept is zero. Now we've got to do a sketch. Okay, so we know our point goes through the origin, one of the points. Now our gradient is negative a half. So remember, this is rise over run. We know it's in a negative direction, so it goes down that way. So the rise is one. So I can either go up and across, or I can go down and across that way. It doesn't matter, as long as my slope is that way. So the rise is one, so we go up one, and the run is two. So we go one, two across, and there's my next point. Connect them up with a straight line, put the arrows on the end, and you're finished. How easy was that, everyone? So just don't get confused, because there's no number at the end. It goes through the origin. Excellent. So that's all I have for you for, for today. Hopefully the coronavirus doesn't um, affect us too long, and we'll be back in class soon. All right, so here's your exercise. Exercise 1F, page 39. So we don't do all the, fir all the uh, first exercises in chapter one. One to six, every second question is fine. Seven to 11, practice the worded questions. Now, just really quickly, um, I'll go over my workings out. So if you want to copy it all down, press pause if you need to, and go over the work. Re-listen to my video if you still need to, but hopefully that makes sense. See you soon. Bye.